Income elasticity of demand, shortened to YED, measures the responsiveness of consumer demand to a change in income. The equation to calculate the coefficient of YED is YED equals the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. For example, if income rises by 5% in a year and the demand for clothing increases by 10%, then the YED for clothing is plus 2.0. The result is a positive one. As income rises, so does the demand for clothing, in this case, by a greater proportion than the increase in income. However, if demand for bread falls by 20% following an increase in income of 5%, the YED for bread over the relevant income range is minus 4. In the case of bread, the result is a negative one. Goods where the relationship is positive are called normal goods and inferior when the relationship is inverse. However, there is another aspect to income elasticity, exactly how responsive, that is, how elastic, demand is to a change in income. Economists use the concept of proportionate to compare responses. For example, if the demand for a product changes in exactly the same proportion as income changes, then the result is proportionate, and YED will equal 1. If it does, then YED is said to be unitary. When the coefficient is less than 1, the YED is inelastic, and when it is greater than 1, it is elastic. So, in the case of both clothing and bread, YED is elastic, which means there is a greater proportionate response in demand to the change in income. Both goods are elastic despite having different signs. It is therefore possible to have both elastic and inelastic normal and inferior goods. For example, if the YED is plus 2.5 for smartphones and is minus 0.5 for rice, then we can deduce the smartphones are, with respect to income, an elastically demanded normal good, and rice is an inelastically demanded inferior good. Income elasticity can be visualized through angle curves. Here we can see that angle curve A slopes upwards and it is steep, which indicates that the quantity demanded for good A changes by a smaller proportion than income, indicating that it is a normal good with an inelastic YED. Angle curve B also slopes upward, indicating it is a normal good, but the gradient is much flatter, indicating that the quantity demanded of good B changes by a greater proportion than income, Hence, YED is elastic. In this case, the good is not only normal, but is considered to be a luxury good. Finally, with angle curve C, the gradient is downward sloping, indicating that the relationship between income and quantity demanded is inverse, and the good is an inferior good. Economists are interested in income elasticity because knowing YED helps firms and governments plan their output in such a way that they can respond effectively to demand changes and achieve an efficient use of scarce resources. For example, if a US firm produces a product to be sold in two countries, Germany and Japan, and its market research suggests that the YED in Germany is 2.2 and in Japan is 0.5, then the firm can predict sales following changes in consumer incomes in Germany and Japan. For example, if incomes are forecast to rise by 4% in Germany and by only 2% in Japan, then demand in Germany will increase by 8.8% and in Japan by only 1%. This is highly significant and the firm can target more resources to the growing market in Germany. Similarly, governments will take into account YED for public goods and merit goods. For example, if the YED for motor vehicles is 3.5 and for cycles is 0.2, then, as national income grows, demand for road space will grow, with demands for roads increasing more than for cycle lanes. Using these figures, we can predict that an increase in a country's income of 2% will lead to a 7% increase in demand for motor vehicles and just a 0.4% increase in demand for cycles. This information, along with YED data for a whole range of transport forms, can help shape a government's transport policy. Clearly, 
Information on YED is very useful in that it helps solve the problem of information failure and enables firms and governments to make more rational decisions about the best way to allocate scarce resources to competing uses. To see more videos, go to www.economicsonline.co.uk.